Yeah. Psychology. Oh, I wanted to ask you, did, did you get that book, Islamic Psychology, or are you just doing a course? Or? Uh, no, I just had that fortune to um, attend a class. Okay, yeah. And it was a class with a brother who not only had researched Islamic psychology, but has studied the Inside Out Paradigm with James Smart. Oh, wow. So he had both. Yeah. Oh, that's um, but just to look at some of the uh, Islamic language. So you have your akal, which is like your intellectual mind, or <laughs> our soul, which is our self. Our cold, which is the heart, the center of our well being, which is mm. probably the correct translation for our spark, Janine. Mm. The nafs, which is our desires and wants, the ego, and the jizzah, which is the physical body. And the way he described it, and the way I'm starting to now shift in the way I'm describing it which will fit more with Islamic psychology and it makes so much more sense. It, it's still what I've been saying, but it's, I'm kind of saying it's slightly different, is how the, under, we, we have the understanding of feelings come from thought in the moment. We need that understanding to be the understanding of the kul, but not the understanding of the akal. Like we get the akal understanding quite quickly, but it needs to sink into our, the kalb, into the heart, for us to truly see it. And um, when uh, there are verses in the Quran, which you know, the, these are things that I'm now weaving into the the program I'm teaching now, which you guys can all um, listen to, but not the one that I recorded last night. Uh, the one that I record this morning, inshallah, will be better. I had kids fighting. I had all sorts of things going on in the middle of the one last night. Seriously. Got to practice peaceful parenting in front of an international audience last night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, some that have done my peaceful parenting in the group, and I said, so there's your debt. This is your live example of setting limits. <laughs> Oh, they were, it was unbelievable. I'm sorry, I won't go there. But anyway, um, so I'm not going to dwell on this language in my teachings because I think people get all very complicated and confused. Yeah. But I'm going to keep, I will share it with them so they understand that what I'm teaching them fits with Islamic psychology. So I shared it with them last night this slide but I didn't use this kind of language other than the heart because it's called the peaceful heart mm. um, and then occasionally I, I was talking about and I'd point to my head and say we don't want the understanding here in the apple we want the understanding here in the heart, in the heart. Um, so that was one thing the other thing I wanted to share was this slide. Is the heart the home of the fitra? Yeah, exactly. The home, the home of intentions, the fitra, the home of our confidence, the home of every, everything. So it really is the, the spark. So I talked to the brother. I talked to the brother. Um, was there a problem to continue to use the metaphor? Because I said, said it would be a metaphor of spark in teaching the kids. Because <laughs> I think for kids, it can be hard for them to, to see the difference between the physical heart and, and the spiritual heart that we're talking about. So having a different name for it, their spark, can be helpful. And so I said, is there a problem with that? And he said, he gave me some verses from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to it as the nur, as the light. Mm. But, and so he said he doesn't see any problem with it. And he gave a few examples as long as it's explained like this. And I said, yeah, that's how we explain it. So it's been really, really um, wonderful 
time in actually um, connecting the dots with Islamic psychology and confirming that this fits beautifully with Islamic psychology. And in fact, what we're teaching about feelings coming from thought in the moment may well be what makes Islamic psychology understandable to the everyday person. Because I must say, from whatever I've read and looked at when it comes to purification of the heart, Islamic psychology, all those sorts of things, I've always found it incredibly challenging to get my head around it because they get too complicated. And this was one of the things the brother said was, yes, what's so beautiful about the inside out paradigm as long as we're uh, in alignment um, with our teachings in Islam and in how we present the inside out paradigm, it simplifies everything. And I think that's where we've gone wrong is we get too um, complicated in our explanations. You know, mm -hmm. defining all the different goals, defining all the, di like giving everything different labels and mm -hmm. different buckets to go in. When really, it actually boils down quite simply to this hadith. There's a piece of flesh in the body. If it becomes good, the whole body becomes good. And if it's spoiled, the whole body gets spoiled. And that is the heart. It's the mm. same with the spark. And so we just bring into it, um, if we come to this diagram here. Except that the spark doesn't. That innate well-being isn't it always there? Like it gets covered up by thought. Yes, yes. That's, well, that's, what, that's what I. Well, that's what we'll say. Well, isn't it also the hadith where it is said, well, that there's a cover over their heart. That if we do sins, there's like black dots until mm. heart goes black, right? So it is still a covering and then we bring it back to thought because what is sin? Sin is a behavior, right? So we look at the thought, this is the thought chain. Mm. Yeah. So our feelings always come from thought. We're not trying to change that because we can't change that. We don't have the power to change that. But when we understand it's just thought, then we have the opportunity to change our behavior, right? So at the end of the day, if we want to talk about that hadith of the black spots on the heart, it still comes down to feelings coming from thought in the moment because the reason we do the behavior, which is sinful behavior, is because we're not seeing it. So it still boils back to the paradigm. So the covering of the heart comes from... Um, you know, more and more and more disconnection from Allah. And of course, the more disconnection you have, the more covering you have, the less <clears throat> that that spark is available or the heart is, you know, ruling. So there was another sister, I listened to her, her talk and she was talking about how the heart is meant to rule the system so if we go back to this list that the heart is meant to be the one she put it as king of our system that's ruling but of course the more thinking we have the more we're not seeing that feelings come from thought in the moment the more we actually end up being ruled by the akal mm. or the nafs mm. Mm. right and so then the heart's lose lost it's not ruling anymore. And so that is really fits in with this hadith. Mm. This hadith, where's it gone? There, right? This hadith. So, oh, that, that's really yeah. clear. Oh, yeah. That, that's really, that is really clear as well because it's, if the heart, which is connect, if it's connected to Allah in that optimal space, then it's going to rule in the right way in a manner pleasing to Allah. But if, if the heart's not connected to Allah, then the nafs mind thinking 
takes over. Well, it's either the intellectual thinking and intellectualizing thing, yes. or the ego, which is the base desires, either yeah. one will rule it. And so it still comes back to this feelings and thought being the cause of the, the behavior and that when we understand it clearly, we can be on top of the behavior. We don't allow the feelings to drive our behavior. And so then we get back to the heart ruling, like back to connection with Allah and the heart ruling the show rather than the nafs or the akal. And, and that's why there's so much emphasis on purification of the heart and oh, you know, diseases of the heart. And, yeah. and, I'm so, and yeah. so they keep talking about that. But the thing is, it doesn't but, fit for me. Yeah. But because they don't discuss connect them, the connect this bit here, this is the missing link again in Islamic mm. psychology and how they're teaching it. This is the missing link that feelings come from thought in the moment. And that's why people are struggling because they're still they're not seeing the connection. That's right. They still think outside things are causing them to feel the way they feel. And so they're lost. So when they see that, then what they're trying to do is they're trying to work down here and control the result. They're trying to fix things by controlling the result. But as you can see in this diagram, there's no breakable link there either. We can't mm. break the link between thought and feeling and we can't break the link with to, towards the results because that's in Allah's hands. This is the only place mm. that, we, that have we have personal thought. responsibility and, and opportunities. Yeah, and so when you give them this diagram simply, when you break it down this simply for them, then they can understand the Islamic psychology. Mm. It's beautiful, isn't it? How yeah, and... It is, and I'm. I think I know. Did you? Uh, I think we might be talking about the same same brother because I saw his. I was gonna. I see his webinar, but I didn't get a chance to. But I did look at all of his other stuff on his website, and I did listen to other information, and it just was so much in alignment with some of the discussions that we've been having in our group in terms of the heart and the head, right? The mindset, and you know, you can you can coin it heart set or whatever you want to coin it. Um, but in the terms of the, the nature of the heart, that the heart is the, is what is driving the human being. And yeah. the heart is not sound and foundationally uh, uh, rooted in the right place. Yeah. It, it corrupts the rest of the system. Yeah. So the benefit of going to his um, webinar was we were able to ask lots of questions. And since then, I've been able to ask him about, for instance, the spark curriculum and whether there's any issue in teaching all of this where basically we're calling the call of the heart, the spark mm. in them. And be, and cause I was thinking that for kids calling it something different might make it easier for them. Um, as, as a metaphor. And he came back with verses from the Quran where he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself refers to it as nur, as light. Um, and, you know his guidance that's within us and that sort of thing um, in many places so he couldn't see any issue as long as we described it correctly which is um what i the way he put it is that that's how we describe it you know subhanallah so it all all fits beautifully together so this brother has learned from jamie smart about the inside out paradigm that's why um and he's spend a lot of time traveling the globe learning islamic psychology so he was an amazing resource to fit the dots together so since listening to his i've also um been listening to some other um people who have explained about islamic psychology and uh, some of well the the language of like we go back to this this one here um the the issue of the heart being the one that is meant to be the ruling the one ruling the show um but how the nafs and the akal take over at times and then the the rule of the heart gets weakened 
um, that was her, it was another sister's kind of way of putting it. And I thought, well, that actually really simplifies what we've been talking about where we say um, getting it in our head and like understanding it intellectually, but not really seeing it. We can actually, instead of use that kind of language, we can use mm -hmm. a psychology language, which is, well, we're, we're, it's, it, we've got it in our head, but we haven't got it in our heart. Mm -hmm. Cause it's, and it's kind of true. And so last night when they all wanted to jump ahead in the program because they had a million and one questions, which happens all the time. I said, the reason I've only given you this much now is because I don't want you to just get it in your head. I want it to sink down into your heart. And so you'll be given it little bit by little bit so that there's time for that to happen. <laughs> and so it's really helped make that whole explanation so much smoother being mm. able to have this islamic psychology perspective um to work from so um yeah and you see that it's it's um the in the the akal when the akal is taking charge that's when we're trying to think the solutions through, trying to control everything, right? Mm. Through our solutions through our own intellect. Right? Logically, yeah, logically. logically instead rather than of, instead solutions. of getting the guidance from Allah, which comes through the Kolb and the Kolb thinking. And I have some verses now from the Quran which indicate that the, that the Kolb actually thinks, reasons, and reflects. And so, really? yeah. And so I, yeah, that's a different way of, I never heard it put that way. Yeah. And so that really makes sense of our experience of being guided by our heart rather than our head. Right. Yeah. You said that there were, there were verses in the Quran that, that pertain to that. Is that what you said? Yes. Um, and I will be sharing them not yet because it, um, they're going to be in the, they're going to be in lesson three of peaceful hearts where I talk about our internal guidance system. So when we talk about our internal guidance system, we can have more. Um, I think what it does is it gives people more trust that we, we have heart thinking, which is different to uncle thinking. It's reminding me. That's when intuition. I yeah, that's uh, what I was thinking too. Intuition. Does heart thinking equals intuition or guidance? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you okay. can start using more Islamic ways of describing mm -hmm. these things. So we've had language that we've used where we've said intuition. So intuition is like heart thinking. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So the other problem we have with, with um, when the heart loses the the sovereignty of us <laughs> if you want to look at it that way <laughs> is um when desires take place and that's when we can't see that we're okay even if nothing changes outside of us we're looking for looking for the, the good feeling to come from something outside of us and so we're driven by um desire rather than you know by our heart so then that comes back to this diagram really beautifully in that um, our behavior here is run by our feelings if we're in nafs, if it's kind of like the nafs is in charge, if the ego's in charge, if the ackle's in charge, we're down here trying to control everything and, and trying to take the place of, of a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So this diagram actually works quite well with the explanation. How, how um, that wasn't what I was meant to share with you today, but I guess it was meant to be what I shared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. 